Good morning. We're back in my backyard today and I wanted to just give you an overview of how things are looking back here at the end of August. The patio is looking pretty awesome. And so is the dead, dead grass because we have started a project and therefore everything is a mess back here. Like it is just piles and piles of junk. I know you wouldn't care. So I'm sharing it with you. Back here in the dead, dead grass, I'm doing a grass replacement. We took, I took the sod out last week. We're laying drip line and I'm gonna put in a plant called Lipea or Phyla nautiflora. Another version of this plant is called Carapia. So I will be doing a full video about how we did what we did because the whole process has been a little bit unclear. Um, when you get into the weeds, when you get into the details of a project, like, well, how many inches should you space the irrigation? Or do the irrigation holes need to go up or down? These sorts of things I will have figured out and then we'll be sharing with you. So in the meantime though, I just wanted to let you guys know that this is what's happening and also just share what's going on with the flowers back here. Cause if you've been following me, this is a full sun patio and I call this the rose patio. I've planted a number of David Austin roses. Everything's in containers on this patio. And I also have these large um, wash bin containers that are planted with a number of different plants. And now that it's the end of August, I did have to change some out. So I just wanted to share with you what has been successful and what hasn't. But focus in on the flowers. Okay, here is my Clematis etois violet, which has done a second flush. I did a better job this year. After it was done blooming, I went ahead and cut it down to about a foot above the container top. And that was, this is my first flower to bloom every season. I think it blooms in May and then it looks amazing for a month or so. And then I cut it back and now it's the end of August and it's blooming again. Underneath it, I have planted one Diamond Mountain Euphorbia. That's the little white wispy flowered plant. Um, and then I planted a second Clematis back here called uh, Polish spirit, which hasn't bloomed, but that's not uncommon. We often have clematises doing their best in their second year. And with Etoile Violet, this is its second year as well. Okay, next to that is our first David Austin rose. This is a climbing rose called Bathsheba. It's very beautiful. Also, it's first year. So we're not expecting a lot from this plant, but what I am doing is trying to train it along this wall right here so that we will have just amazing blooms the thing about bathsheba which is cool is that it's it's david austin like rates their roses based on what they can do like do they have good health do they avoid bugs and this one has a star for blooming in shade so that's really great because this spot gets a lot of sun at certain points of the year and then at this point later in the summer it's getting like mostly shade. Okay so let's move around this way. All right let's talk about this bed for a minute. This bed was my showstopper last year. Um, this is a gigantic redwood tree. California redwood growing in our backyard. It does so much for us in terms of shade and coolness. And underneath the redwood, we um, created a bed that's about two to two and a half feet deep. And I planted Boston ferns. They are going great. So in this bed, when we created it also, the same time we, we, we did all of this last year in January, 2021. This bed was filled with so much lovely new soil, compost, worm castings, everything amazing. And the plants loved it and burst forth. Now this year, what I am finding is that the redwood roots are coming up inside this bed, I think searching for water. And this whole bed, as soon as you touch the ground, is just like a puzzle con of connected roots. And I think it's... Um, 
not only taking the water from the plants that I want to grow in here, but also I think it's just kind of snuffing out the root system of some of the other plants. So what I started doing down here is planting other things to see like if they could survive because the super tunis did terrible this season. The lemon corals seen them didn't really thrive. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. What I have here, I'll put on the screen. It's one of those succulent poppies. It's doing okay. Um, I just transplanted Big Yellow Moon. I have a little geranium, ivy geranium that I'm trying out here. So this is like my little section of trial plants. So I'm just kind of like boo about this bed. We're gonna have to figure this out. How to deal with redwood roots. That will be a video in the future. The lemon tree though, hello, it looks amazing. It's so bushy and tall. If you wanna hear more about how to prune your lemon tree, check out my playlist. Down here we have a De Raw Doll Rose, which I absolutely love this rose, especially in containers, the way that it kind of spills out. It's so beautiful. If you want to know how I feed my roses every month, there is a video in the roses playlist. So let's start over here. Here's the Alnwick. She is like a tall rose, um, kind of a V shape. So I underplanted it with this plant, which I'm blanking on the name. And it's kind of a shade lever. And now we're at the point where it's doing what I imagined. It gets protection from the rose. And so it is supposed to have bright yellow flowers. That hasn't happened this season, but we'll, I'm hanging in there. Here's the Alnwick rose. She just had a most amazing flush that's just finished. Um, over the last week but she's sending up some more so this has been like the best production of this season again this is the first year on her um, I'm expecting even better things next year see all this business in here this is from not enough water earlier in the season and we had a heat wave and um, this is exactly look at this because if this happens to you what happened to all of my roses. Someone was staying here and didn't water the plant enough. And so all of the, I came home from vacation and all of the roses had this looking on their leaves. So I cut back a bunch of the plant, started watering and it's totally done great. Okay, here we have a sweet potato vine, a black one, just a generic black one from Lowe's. And this is called Salsa Verde. This is a coleus. It, it clearly loves sun. This is one plant. This is Bright Lights Double Moon Glow Osteospermum. I always am attracted to this plant at the store and buy it, but then it never looks that great in a container, I'll be honest. Um, you do have to deadhead it, but it's so pretty, right? Okay, this is the showstopper. Totally am loving this salvia called Play in the Blues by Proven Winners. It, this is one single season. This one started out as a four, a four inch, just single line of plant and it's grown into this. So beautiful. Down here we have a lime sweet potato vine. Again, just a generic one from Lowe's. And then inside of here, I just added these Egyptian flowers the other day as a fresh, as a freshener. And it's just peeking out. And I, I just realized these pots could use a little bit of color, a little more color, because there's a lot of green going on. These flowers are called pintas or Egyptian star flowers. They love sun. This one is called Ruby and they're watering. It says water weekly during dry spells. They get 10 to 12 inches tall and six to 10 inches wide. So it's kind of a perfect plant for a pot and it supposedly loves, loves, loves heat and um, sun. So it's really doing great. I put these in a week ago and already blooms all over. All right, next to it, we have the uh, Gabriel Oak. This is the Gabriel Oak Rose, also first season in the pot. Very beautiful. And then also underplanted with our Alcamilla Gold Strike. Notice it says deer tolerant. I also have under all of these plants um, some Dichondra Silver Falls, which I just think is very dramatic. 
a Cinco de Mayo Floribunda. Love this flower. I'm going to keep using it. In this little pot down here, I have a Lamium and a Forever Purple Hookera. And then moving in, we have a Verbena, which I think is called Empress Purple. And she has been very pretty. I just cut her back, you can see right here, this week, um, because she was all the way down to the floor and mostly covered in spent blooms. So I decided it was time to cut her back. So this week, what I'm gonna do is give all these plants a little coating of flower granular fertilizer and some compost to go into the fall for like their last big hurrah. Okay, so this pot is a big mix. All of these pots are on drip. This is a Rudbeckia called Solar Eclipse, two foot by two foot yellow and brown flowers. So that's totally working well. And then this purple one has a name. Oh, here it is. Blue Horizon. And it doesn't get very wide, one and a half feet wide, 30 inches high, morning sun and afternoon shade. So this one is loving its life here in this little section. Um, it gets exactly that. And then next to it is this salvia, which has been very beautiful with these deep colors. And it's called Merlot. It totally sat there for a month, but then eventually, poof, you can see that's one four inch plant. And then next to it are the rest of the repeated uh, bins. And again, they were all planted with a dwarf bougainvillea, which was hot pink. <clears throat> and that was amazing with the green potato vine. They did terrible, those bougainvillea. And I was sitting here looking at all of these pots, feeling sad that I'm a terrible gardener and then realized, well, I feel like that, just change them. So I just planted this beautiful, beautiful verbena yes, or earlier this week. It's called Ming Lascar Mango Orange. Verbenas love the sun. And based on the purple one, I just thought, let's go for it. Um, 12 to 14 inches high and 14 to 16 inches wide. A USDA zone 11, meaning it's not going to probably winter over. Um, but look at that color. And it's already got I mean, all of the dark is new blooms and all of the light is old blooms. So it's just, it's been, it's been great. I also have that osteospermum in there. It almost died with the watering problem that happened while we were on vacation, but it does shoot out some flowers. So we're kind of like, I'm hoping the verbena is going to kind of hide what's going on in there. We have the sweet potato vine and another play in the blues. And then I added just now a coleus a sunshade coleus called stained glass works defiance and um just for a little back color because do you see what's happening under here with the salvia it's losing its leaves here in the bottom area and so i just want things to kind of cover that so it just looks totally full 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 okay so then moving along here we have our Strawberry Hill Climbing Rose, which is coming into another flush right now, also in a pot. If you wanna know more about the details, you can go to my roses playlist, but it is loving itself. Um, same copycat over here. Oh, also all of them have Dichondra Silver Falls in there. Added that verbena. Look at this one over here, and this, it gets a lot of sun. And so it's even bigger growing faster. The coleus is getting a lot of sun. Happy. I added, I found some more like miniature euphorbias. Happy. Covering those sticks in there under the salvia. Um, underneath we have wild magic basil. It's a purple basil. It gets watered from the watering hole of this um, wash tub. I've also added some time down there with which also gets watered from kind of the drips that come out of this tub all right and so then moving along this is a beautiful tibicina ervilliana or purple princess flower 
I love this plant very, very much. It gets up to six feet tall and wide. And I had really hacked this one down and I think it's been to the benefit of the plant because it's really bushed out. My recommendation would be to do that in the spring. I've underplanted it with a super tunia that I wintered over from last year and it's doing great. Over here, this is my experiment on peonies. This is a peony, which is doing great, holding its own in the sun. Um, which one? I'm not sure, but just generally lovely green foliage and then underplanted also with the verbena empress purple. Then moving along to here, here's another Egyptian flower so pretty this one also gets a lot of sun in this location and so you can just see how many flowers are going bonkers there the verbena suddenly I'm loving these pots whereas last week I was hating them <laughs> and that's because they're full I added in these white euphorbia two of them this one maybe isn't doing as much but it's supposed to be hiding these sticks over here um and then this is a zinnia, two zinnias from Annie's Annuals. I think it's called Baneri Salmon. Baneri, I think it's called Salmon. That's, the Baneri is the big old ones. Like look at how big this is. These flowers are just huge. They're so beautiful. And I'm loving this look. So next year for sure, I'm gonna have one there, one there, and one there and it's gonna be beautiful, right? I just need more zinnias. Um, underneath, I have a dahlia. This comes back every year. A surefire begonia and a ivy geranium. This is a very sunny spot. No protection here, sun all day. This is a Tritoscantia purple heart. It looks like it might be getting a bit too much sun because it has kind of these yellow marks on it. But the ones in the back um, have less and they're protected more by the, by, the, by the plants. Overall, I'm really happy with the way these plants have come along. So you can see from this view, like the hot pink bougainvillea would have really kind of grabbed your attention, but it kept losing all of its flowers. And I don't know if it needed more water, if it wasn't happy in the pot or what, but we just need some more pink in this area. So I'm excited to see what happens with the Egyptian flowers and the verbena. Back here, we have another little section of plants that I often show. So let's have a little look. So it, when we scoot this way, this little area it was kind of a new bed for this year because we put these bricks here, these two stacked bricks, which made this from a curving kind of hill to a flat bed and the plants are much happier. So these are all of my Rose Marvel uh, salvias, which we transplanted. There's a drift here. This one isn't doing well. I think maybe it's too high. I need to lower it, but there is a drift here. I cut those back about a month ago at the end of July when they were really looking terrible and they've all flushed back for a nice fall cooler weather uh, situation. I added some yarrow to see if it would survive in this area. It's a bit shadier over here. Um, this is a transplanted ivy geranium because I am loving this, what, what I'm seeing over here. There's two ivy geraniums and then I took pieces of them and planted them in each of the nooks and crannies of the bricks. And I, I'm, I'm just so enamored with how it's looking because I can just imagine all of this going all the way along. How flowery and beautiful that will eventually be. All right, and then over here, the main one I wanted to show you was this. This is a pot that I potted up in February. It was my first pot of 2022. It has two Hookera rosatas in, which are California natives. This is one plant. Can you see that? One, two. I think the width of these are 22 or 24 inches, these pots. So it's just a massive plant. It also has a uh, periwinkle, vinca minor as the spiller and then i had planted begonia tubers in and unfortunately this pot in particular they have not thrived 
they, I think, I'm not sure, but they have gotten a lot of powdery mildew all over them. So this pot has been just beautiful as it is with the Hukra and Vinca. But this one, I did the same, planted the same. And you can see the begonias are going bonkers in this pot. They are healthy and beautiful. These were begonia tubers from Costco. Just really, really, really fun color. So you can see them down there. So this one, and then there is the hookra. Oh, the hookra, yeah, there's the hookra. One, two. So the begonia have kind of all spilled out the front. So yeah, this one worked a treat. This is just so interesting because when you think about microclimates, like this is just a few feet away from that one, but it did so much differently. So, you know, that's gardening for you, right? Thanks so much for joining me here on my tour in August to follow up. I uh, hope it was helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.